Hey guys, how's it going? Ghostly Rich here. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to install some tweeters. Um, if you have crossovers, I'm going to show you some general locations and how to hunt for a location. But right now, um, I'm just going to show you this is the tweeter that I'm going to be putting in. It's a JL. The crossover is actually kind of easy with these ones because it's not an actual crossover box. It's just heat shrinked in, so there's no real adjustment. Um, it's you know it's a cheaper way of doing them but tweeters a tweeter so as you can see here with mine it's actually quite simple I just have to grab right here and pull and off comes my pillar here so I'm gonna be putting mine in here because I was playing around with them in a couple of cars today and I found that uh, putting them right here actually didn't sound too bad and that way if you can you can hide your crossover inside the door that way when you put your woofer in or your mid you're just gonna put it down here and you'll have your tweeter up here other locations of course you can always put it in here right next to the windshield or you can put it up here or basically the best way to do it if you want and you're really wanting to get that perfect sound in your car is double-sided sticky tape and connect it when you have your door panel off all you do is you hook it in with your woofer and the crossover put it on the crossover and then put it on here with some double-sided sticky tape and here and on the pillar just see which ice you like the sound the best um, other than that, I'm going to first uh, go inside, and now that I've got my pillar right here, I'm going to go design, decide where I want to. I've got some hole saw kits, so I'm just going to actually match up the hole saw with the size of the tweeter, and then we'll bang that through, and I'll grab the one from the other side so we can make a match. Okay, stay tuned for the next. All right, so the next thing we're going to have to do is choose our hole saw. So... I've got my kit here and all I do is pull it out and then I lay a couple of them out and then from there I'm just gonna see which one's the size of the tweeter I'm guessing it's gonna be this one right here let's take a look here yeah it fits nice and tight into there good so it's just enough for me to squeeze the tweeter in um, so I'm gonna be using this one and next thing I'm gonna do is pretty much just line it up here and then well I'm gonna trace around it do the same on this make sure they're in the exact same spot so it doesn't look goofy in the car and then I'm gonna cut through the other thing I'm gonna post here is um, I'm gonna post how to remove your door panel it's gonna be a link in an annotation I'll post it and that way if you need to remove your door panel to you know get at your pillar like this you can and uh, other than that, yep, uh, stay tuned for the next section. Alright guys, so if you've clicked on the video that I've posted, which the link should still be up, you should be at this point with the uh, door panel off, as you can see. So, what I'm going to show you here is, basically you're going to want to be able to, you might need to take your control from your door and put it back on, and you're going to roll your windows up and down and see your clearance in here. Uh, what you're basically going to be looking for is where you can mount if you have a brick crossover. So that way, if you have a brick crossover, which is just the box, um, you can put it in and know it's not going to bump the window when it rolls up and down. Uh, it's really important to do so just because, well, it would suck if you roll in your window down and it starts scraping after you get the door back together, obviously. Um, so as you can see here, I've got a pocket here, which I could probably mount a crossover. But the thing is, is some of the really high-end speakers, like, say, you know, once you get into the real, the best kickers and stuff, the, the crossover's, like, the size of a Bible. It's pretty big. Um, so you go to put it in, and it's just not going to go there. You're going to have to find a place maybe under the dash or in the back to mount it. And then you can also go through here and see where you have spaces on the back of your door panel. And then, you know, just go through both of them. Make sure you don't poke through the other side. If you want, use some really strong double-sided sticky tape or, or yeah, just screw them into something. Like, if you put it on here, um, I'd probably double-sided sticky or I'd roll the window down and use some very short plastic screws and just make sure it's not hitting the door. Um, and then, of course, what you're going to do is you're going to wire, as I've done here, 
I've got my positive and negative already hooked up. Now here's the thing, when you're going into factory wiring, if you're not running fresh new wire to the door, um, if you are you're putting a tweeter up in here, I would suggest running new wire from here to there, so that way, you know, for your tweeter and for your crossover, you know, you can just run everything fresh from here to the crossover, and then new wire from here to the crossover, from the crossover to the deck. It's just better that way. With me, I'm just talking on the factory wiring because um, I've got these amped, but it's nothing more than, you know, 65 watts RMS. Once you go past 100 watts RMS, that's when you switch out your wiring. Um, so, yeah, just for this, what we're going to be doing now is, as you can see here, I've uh, mounted our tweeter into the pillar. Now I didn't like how tight, it wasn't fitting tight enough for my liking, so what I did is I added some tape as you can see here and I taped it through the back end. Um, it is kind of ghetto but it's still the fact that it's, you know, it's staying in there. You're going to need a lot of pressure to pull that out. Um, you can of course build some sort of bracket if you want to, to mount it into the pillar. Be creative. I mean, that's the fun part of car audio is just playing with stuff. I just did this because that will be more than enough for me for this ride. So, um, and then from here, you'll have wires that go from here to the crossover box, and then from the mid woofer right here to the crossover. And then usually the two wires from there will go back to the stereo unit. Um, or if you're just using a what a mid-size woofer, you're just gonna mount that on there and uh, then like what I've got right here I've got this and then my crossover like I showed you earlier is just built in so I'm gonna plug this in and then I'm gonna solder that down on there so this plugs into the tweeter up here and then it just goes down here and then this is a built-in crossover so it won't allow any bass notes to go through it's a frequency lock basically so it only play high pitches through the tweeter that way the tweeter lasts longer um, this is definitely not the way to go if you really want um, to have adjustment because a lot of people they're gonna want some adjustments so they can say this is what I want the tweeter to play and how much I'm actually usually that person but right now for the car for the tweeters I have I'm just gonna borrow well not borrow but use these and then say once I you know if I end up going with the Hertz speakers I plan in the future then I'll be removing this and I'm gonna mount some crossovers and stuff like that so um, I'll let you see after I've got it all wired up as a last thing and then we'll give it, you know, just, you know, give, hope this helps you out with some ideas. Alright guys, so as you can see here we have our tweeter mounted and we have everything wired, our woofers in, or our mid, and uh, then once everything's all wired up like so, as you can see I've got the uh, passive crossover mounted right here, or well, yeah the one that's just in line here and then of course the other one is if you have the little box mounted here you'll have your wires going into there the mid into the pause and neg and that and that I was gonna give you guys some more intel on uh, pause and neg but to tell you the truth it's only for Mazda uh, for this Mazda it's gray and white for the fronts uh, white is the positive and gray is the negative but for every vehicle it changes um, with home theater it was kinda easy because the lighter color was always the uh, positive but with cars they always change it it's really easy to find out though there's lots of places you can go to type in your vehicle or you know type in positive negative for speakers on you know online and you should be able to find it easy enough to find your positive and negative now once you have your little crossover set up right here um, now is the important part, you know, closing both doors, turning it on, and setting where you want it to cross over, you know, if it, give, it lets you. Some of them will, some of them won't. You usually want to, you know, just play with it and see where you think it sounds best before it crosses over. I would give you numbers, but that's not what you want. You want to go by your ear and make it sure it sounds good to you. Um, basically 
the rule of thumb, crank it and make sure this isn't buzzing because you don't want bass going through that at all. This is just for speech. You want it to be nice and clear. Well, not just for speech. You know, for higher pitch symbols. As you can see with the Mazda, it never has one. Um, it just has it down below. And the problem with this is, with just that going on, I now... If I don't have a tweeter in, all my sound goes straight to my knee. So if you have passengers in here, it sounds like crap. With the tweeter, now I'll get the low end that I want down there, and I'll get the high pitch up here, which will not be blocked by people's knees. All right? So, yeah, basically what you're going to do is set your, you know, high pass, and if it gives you low pass, set your low pass for your low, um, for your mid here. And then you'll set your low pass here. So say if you set this at 80 and then your high pass at 40 and then you go here to your deck and you set it so it sends uh, 80 to your little woofer here. And you do that to make sure that it only plays that low frequency kind of thing, you know? Or when you set it like that, it'll probably play this is the low end. So if it only has an LPF or a crossover, so if it says where do you want it to cross over, so it plays four or you know, well not forty and above, but yeah, it basically the lower the hertz, the lower the bass kind of thing. So if it's you know forty or something, you don't want it there. You usually want your these around say a hundred, and then your tweeters you just like I said, go by ear, um, and then. The rest, of course, is for your sub, because those are the three speakers, your tweeter, your mid, and your sub. Uh, sub usually plays 80 and below. This plays 80 and above. Sometimes it'll play, you know, choose by quality of speaker, 100, 125, whatever you want. And then this will play the everything higher than that. All right, I hope this video helped you out. Please like, subscribe. Um, any questions, post in the comment section below. I'll be happy to help you out. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.